I am so sick and tired of people in general hospitals, Facebook group pages, spelling Nell's name wrong. Learn how to spell her name, and when I fucking comment and teach you how to spell it right, ignore it. It is N E L L E. There is an E at the end. Just, in, just like in Valentine. There's an E at the end. How do you not know that? Question. How is Child's Play a scary movie? Like this guy, I was watching his YouTube video, and he, and he was like, he was like, there's this one movie I cannot stand. I can't even look at the cover right now. It's too scary. That doll is just so scary. And it's ch and he goes, it's child's play. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? There's more scarier fucking killers out there than fucking ch uh, Chucky, a fucking doll. Like, that ain't scary at all. All he does is run around and kill people. How is that scary? You know what's scary? It's having a guy in a hockey mask come after you. Or a guy with 10 inch nail like blades on his fingers coming at you in a dream. Or a guy with a chainsaw coming at you with someone else's face on his face. Like that is fucking scary. But a fucking doll? How is that fucking scary? He said there's one item he would never sell on eBay or Amazon, which is that fucking doll. Knowing that fucking doll is worth tons and tons of money. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? You're scared of a fucking doll that isn't real? I mean, none of the killers are real, but... I could watch Chucky all night long in the dark and not be scared. Yes, it's disgusting. Yes, it's gross. But it's not scary. It's like saying that um, the clown in It, as Pennywise the damn clown, saying he's scary and I hate clowns. I mean, really, clowns are not scary at all. I don't understand why a lot of people are scared of clowns when clowns are not scary I could watch it in the dark all night long in the dark and not be scared one damn bit and in fact I've done it and I wasn't scared I don't know how that movie is a horror movie when you don't even get to see him kill anybody it's always off screen and then, and Chucky, yeah, he kills people, but, and has a fucked up face, but it's not scary. I watch that in the dark all the time, and it doesn't fucking scare me. So, I don't understand how this guy is, is scared of a fucking doll. It just doesn't make sense when there's more scarier horror movies out there than Chucky. I, you explain it to me down in the comments down below. And let me know what horror movie scares you. I get scared easily and yet Chucky doesn't scare me. I don't know. I don't know. Who remembers the movie Poltergeist? One, two, and three. They're awesome movies. They're great. But I'm watching this on reels, what's called Pook to Guys, the, the real truth. And they keep saying, it's the most scariest horror movies out there. It's so scary because it, it happened in real life in 1955 to this one family. And that's why they made a movie about this one family of things and objects moving and demons and da -da -da -da. it's so scary and I'm thinking that movie is not scary at all 
I could watch it in the dark and not be scared. Like, what the fuck are they talking about? How is it as the most scariest movie of all times? How? So comment down below if you've seen this movie and if you agree with them or you agree with me. That it's either say it's not scary or say no I agree with them it's scarier than fuck. Because nobody dies in this movie. Um, in real life the uh, boy is is possessed or whatever can see dead people whatever but in the original it's Karen, Ann Karen, Ann the, the little girl but when they did the remake they did an actual boy for the part I hate the remake more than anything because it's lame as hell it's too over rehearsed and people are acting you can tell people are acting and just playing doing the lines and then going into the next scene it's just not realistic I like movies that look and feel and sound realistic just saying people like you piss me the fuck off I don't care if you can see their whole name because they don't deserve to have their name private because they're rude ass motherfuckers you can tell these two people that said rude things never ever had anybody ever die in their family because this girl up here the first girl goes I know it's night it's not nice to say, and I should be in pathetic, but I'm already tired of weeping willow. And then the girl next to down to her said, I mean, two days to grieve the death of her baby? Wow. That pisses me off and angers me so much. You have no right to fucking say that. No right. And that's why I'm going to read you what I wrote. But I don't want you to see money. It says, okay, how about you lose a son and have someone lie to you saying for the past two years your son is alive and you got to get to know him and love him just to find out the son you thought was, was yours for two years wasn't and that your son died the day it was born. You don't just get over it in half of a fucking day. It doesn't work like that. When someone in your family dies is in real life, I would like to see you not cry for a week, and you only crying the day you found out, and then move on. Because I lost my dad 12 years ago, and I still, 12 years later, once in a blue moon, out of nowhere, cry for him. I do the same for my grandma on my mom's side, who died of cancer. I still cry for her five years later. I lost a great-grandmother, my dad's dad, and a step-uncle and a cousin, too. It's not something that will just go away. You just don't, don't cry the day it happens, and then the next day you're over it the day. I found out my dad died. I couldn't stop crying. I went to work and heard his favorite song on the radio, and I lost it. So for you to say she needs to get over it and that two days of crying over a dead baby is too much. Rude. And you both went too far. I know it's just a TV show, but people don't just... God damn it, I'm trying to read here. People don't just get over losing someone they love until this happens to you. You have no right to talk. People like you piss me off. And yes, they do. Because you don't say, Oh, you're still crying over a dead baby that died when it was born. Get over it. It's not a big deal. When yes, it is a big fucking deal. Because she thought her baby was alive for two fucking years and started loving this baby. You know, let's say the day the baby was born, and she just found out, hey, the baby you were caring for nine months in your fucking belly just died. 
on the day you gave birth to it. Yeah, it'll be sad. Yeah, they'll be set, you know, upset for a couple of days, sad for a couple of days. But they wouldn't cry so much as she's crying. And they'd be okay. They will start moving on. But when you, for two years, start was loving a kid that you thought was your son for two fucking years, and then you find out, oh, that's not your son after all. Yeah, you're going to cry the way Willow on General Hospital is crying. It's sad. It's emotional. So for you to tell them to get over it, it's been two days, you should stop crying now, is ridiculous. And yeah, my battery's about to die. Then this person just wrote me back here, which I don't know why she wrote me back here on her thing instead of what I wrote. But she says, I'm guessing you misinterpreted my comment by your anger phase. It was sarcasm. Soaps are producers produced to be real and to expect someone to grieve for two days is ridiculous. I lost my dog a year ago and still cried. Couldn't imagine a child. Okay, bitch. This is not something to joke about. You don't joke about someone losing a baby for two days. Sarcasm or not. You don't joke about shit like that. You don't joke about a dead baby. And say, I mean, two days to grieve for the death of her baby. Wah. Yeah, that's not something to joke about, dumbass. Wow, someone doesn't know, man. I would show you my face, but I'm too ugly to look at. So, look at the ground where I read for you. Because I don't want to show you their last name. And I want to read it too. It says, Carly said no, which is, by the way, this is how you spell her name. N-E-L-L-E, -E, not N-E-L-L. -L. I don't know how many times I have to tell you dumbasses how to spell her fucking name. And you still don't get it fucking right. Google it. You'll see. <clears throat> Holly said no keeps them from their grandson for two years. Didn't Wally just have his first birthday a few weeks ago and I and one he didn't have his birthday a few weeks ago Sec it was a few months ago and it wasn't on screen which I don't know why and I found Monica's reaction when Michael told her Wiley was his son quite weird how was it weird she was happy she was excited she she's one of those people if you knew you don't know Monica apparently because if you knew Monica you know that that's something Monica does she accepts people in the way things are. She even accepted now for no particular reason. So don't even go there. But that's not the point of this video. The point is the two-year thing. Do you not know math? I mean, I don't know math at all. I'm pretty shitty with math. But I know easy math. Like 2 plus 2 is 4. And how is it two years? Oh, so you don't count... The year that he was born as a year, when he had two Christmases, and you're like, oh, he had two Christmases, but still one year. Doesn't make any fucking sense. Battery's about to die, too. The zero year, the zero year is an age. I mean, they go from one month old, to two months old, to three months old, all the way to 11 months old, and 12 months old, and then boom, they're one years old. That's how it fucking works. Yeah, do the math. Because when, zero years old, one month, two months, you know, the day they were born is a year. And then the kid turned one, not even a few weeks ago, but a few months ago. So technically it's two years. I, I don't know math very well. I just know, yes, it was two years. Do the math. You'll figure it out. I'm done.